Yoga Plus. Download now for free. Hey, welcome. It's Julia. And today I have a feel good class for you. Or maybe you could even call it work sucked today class and you want something to just unwind. Or maybe you love your job. I have the best job in the world, but I know some days I come home and I just need to take some time for myself. It's so easy to forget to take time for ourselves all day long and then we get to the end of the day and it seems like that last request is the straw that broke the camel's back and you just can't take it anymore. So this is the kind of practice you need when you are up to here with your stress and you need to chill for a moment so that you can step back into your life with a little more clarity and with a lot more open-heartedness. So let's start seated. I want you to just bring your uh, left heel towards your bum, kind of like so. And if you notice that your knee pops off the ground, then just slide a little blanket or a cushion underneath there. And I want you to lean back into your right hand just enough that you start to feel an opening through your left quad. We're going to be real kind of systematic as we open up our hips here um, because if you have been sitting at a desk job all day, you don't want to go too extreme into your stretches. You want to ease on into your stretches. Good. From there, I want you to just switch your legs. And that can take a little bit of skill just to get comfortable with this idea of moving from side to side. So your heel's gonna come in towards your bum. You're gonna lean in the opposite hand and it's okay if you find a little bit of space between your tush and the ground right now. That probably just means that you have a pretty tight hip flexor. Good, so now you're gonna flip your fingertips onto the ground and you're just gonna find a little bit of movement from side to side. This does take some core strength to move your legs without kind of flopping. You want to move with ease. So just kind of rock back on your pelvis and switch your legs and do that side to side. And if you're like, Julia, what yoga pose is this called? It doesn't have a name. We're just working with some hip mobility. But I guarantee you're going to feel really good. And this is going to help you with your poses. Good. So we're going to pause in the position we just started on, slide the right hand a little closer to us, and bring the left hand out. First, you're just going to skim the horizon and look over your right shoulder. That's it. So you're not moving too much. You're definitely not moving from the waist down. You're just moving from the waist up. Good. On the next one, you're going to take what I call a double stargazer, double, because both shins are on the ground. Lift your butt up, lift your pelvis up, press into your shin and lift your left side body. One of my favorite poses because you can feel opening all the way across your hip and into the side body. Good, and then swing it back down, and you know the drill. Take your heels to the other side, and then you're going to ground the left hand and just start with skimming the horizon. Again, just moving from the waist. And then a third time, you're gonna come all the way up, press down into your shins, Push down into your grounded hand, and then engage your glutes just enough that you start to feel a hip opening across the front side of you. Really nice, and then bring it back down. And then you're going to extend your right leg out, scoot your tush back, and bring the sole of your left foot in. So you're in a Janusirsasana, or forehead to knee legs. Good, we'll start with a side bend. So you're gonna slide your right arm down the right side of your body. You can always put a block or a pillow there if the ground feels a little bit far. Lift up and over with your left and just reach beyond your toes. So you don't have to dock your hand anywhere, just reach. Good, now turn the chest up a little bit. Inhale to come on up and switch legs. So if you do need to use your hands to switch legs, it's fine. You'll get the hang of it as you move through these poses a little bit more. Transition is a really interesting thing, that space between the poses. That's sort of like just taking the exhale between each email that you have to answer at work, right? Take a pause, take a moment, notice the space between, lift up through the right ribs as you side bend over the left leg. Good. Reach beyond your fingers. You don't have to dock your hand anywhere. Keep the top arm active, and that's going to draw a stretch into the side body. Good. Come on up. Switch the legs again. And this time you're going to turn over your right leg and fold. Wherever your hands want to stop, let them stop. You don't have to touch your toes. Totally fine. If you do touch your toes and it feels good to grab your foot, grab your foot. 
but move the chest wall towards the top of your foot so you're getting a nice release for your hamstring and your low back. Great. Excellent. Come on up and switch sides. So again, you're going to fold over and you don't need to touch your toes. If you do, great. If you don't, just let your hands rest wherever they're going to rest. Pull the belly in a little bit, move the heart forward, and where your body says stop, stop. You've had a million other people telling you to go, go, go all day. At least listen to yourself when your body says stop. Good. Really nice. Come on back up. Switch legs once again, and now we're gonna get a couple of those poses linked together. So we're gonna come into stargazer pose, similar <laughs> as what we did at the top of this practice, but with one leg extended. So with your right leg out, you're gonna take your left hand behind you, sweep your right arm across the horizon, and then come on up. Big opening across the entire side body from toe tip to fingertip, push into the ground, use a little bit of muscle through the grounded shin. So you're pressing down, engage the glute just a bit, the leg will activate to keep you lifted, and then come on down switch sides. So the left leg's going to come out, right foot's going to come in, circle your right hand behind you so you have a nice solid base, swing your left arm in front of you and then up over your ear, lift off. So a little bit of muscle down through that chin, you're going to notice the leg's going to fire, the glute's going to fire. Long leg to long fingertips, you're going to feel nice and spacious and then this grounded hand really root it down so you're lifted. Beautiful work. Then swing yourself back down. And now you're gonna bring the soles of your feet together. So as you draw the soles of your feet together, I want you to walk your sit bones back. Hug your feet a little bit and press the heels of your feet together as you lift your heart up. It's a little counterintuitive because most of the time when you grab your feet, you wanna immediately bend forward, but don't. Pause and go really long with your spine. As you press your heels together, you're gonna to notice that the groins are gonna open a little bit. It's sort of that activation of a muscle to actually lengthen a muscle is what we're, what we're feeling here. Take one more breath in that nice tall seat and then begin to bow forward. You can release your hands from your feet at this time and then just let your head hang. Allow your nose to fall down towards your toes. Relax your back. should feel really nice in your low back. A nice opening for the groin. Big inhale. Big exhale. Good. Walk yourself up. Good. We'll take a tabletop or reverse tabletop rather from here so the feet will come in front of you. As you circle your hands behind you, let your fingertips point towards your heels and then pull the shoulder blades back. From there, you'll lift your hips up. Root through your finger pads so you're not dumping in your wrists. Anchor down through your heels. And then try to drag your heels back towards your bum. You'll feel your uh, hamstrings activate. You could lift your pelvis up. Good, take one more breath here. As you exhale, lower your seat back towards your thumbs and swing your booty back. Now your legs are nice and long and they're together. We'll come into our Paschimottanasana. Root down into your sit bones and sit tall in Dandasana or staff pose. Then swing the arms up overhead and fold. So you fold forward. Again, it's the same drill as it was with the Janya Shusasana. If your hands don't touch your feet, it's fine. Just let them rest. Fold as far as your body allows. You can often access a deeper fold if you draw your belly in just a little bit. Allow the head to come on down, very last. So most of this is about moving from your hips rather than moving just from your neck. Good, two more breaths. That feels nice, come on up. Slide your heels in, take your hands behind you, swing yourself back up into that reverse tabletop, pressing down through your hands so the shoulder blades start to come together a little bit, squeeze them in, move the chest wall through. 
Good. As you exhale, swing your hips back. And we're going to take it down all the way to our back from here. So roll on down. Get yourself onto your back. Free your arms up out from underneath you. And then cross your right shin over your left thigh. Thread your arms through and grab behind your left hamstring for a supine pigeon. Flex your toes and then pull your legs towards your chest. If you have a little more to play with, anchor your right elbow into your right femur bone or your thigh and press it away from you. So as you press away and pull in at the same time, you're gonna access a deeper stretch for your hip. Good. And now maintain this figure four leg. You're just gonna drop it all the way to the side. Good. From here, take your left hand to your right ankle. And this one can be a little bit tricky to hear and visualize, so I really want you to activate as I talk you through it. So the bottom knee, the knee that's on the ground, I want you to pull that into the outer edge of your right foot. So pull it back. You're going to start to feel that as some activity in your butt. And now, as you hang on to your right shin, I want you to widen your knee. So again, we're activating a muscle to stretch it. Widen your lifted knee. So move your knee away from your chest, and you're going to feel a deep release in your hip. Good. Come on back to the middle and relax your feet down. If you want a windshield wiper your knees side to side, that can feel really good. We're thinking about sort of stress relief. It's important to remember that we are wired with a negativity bias. That's how we survived our evolutionary process to get us to this point. So the way our brains are wired, it's wired for survival and we should thank our brains for that. It's wired for pleasure, it's wired for survival. And so when you have these stressful events at work, sometimes that one stressful event stays in your brain so much longer than the 10 amazing moments. So maybe 10 of your colleagues have given you a compliment, but like one person said something really crappy. That tends to be the thing that our brain pays attention to. But what yoga helps us do is to notice the moments that feel good. So we start to retrain our brain to notice stuff that we're doing in the moment that's working for us. We start to rewire ourselves towards happiness or success or pleasure or um, something that is going to make us proud in the moment. So let's feel that as we take ourselves to the other side. Cross your left shin over your right thigh, thread through. So now you're feeling that sensation of stretch. It's a little bit of tension. But if you actually lean into that tension instead of backing away from it, you get this really pleasurable stretch response. Now, if you went too far with your stretch, you're going to get a zinger and your brain's going to say, uh-uh, and you're going to maybe pull back. That's, that's the natural tendency. But if you start to play with that edge of where it feels good, you'll notice that reward. And we start to crave that sensation of, oh, yes, I'm taking care of my body. I like this. And that alone, just sort of that feeling of caring for ourselves, starts to lower our stress response. We start to feel more empowered, have more agency over our experience. Good. And now take those figure four legs and just drop them over. So again, one knee's going to hit the ground. The other knee's going to stay up towards the ceiling. The knee that's on the ground, I want you to hug it in towards the edge of your foot. Then with your right hand, grab your left ankle. And using your outer hip muscles, widen your knee away from you just a little bit. It's not going to be a huge movement. But you're going to start to feel some release through the side panel of the hip and thigh. And that can be a really great sensation. Maybe as you do this, recall a moment in your day that wasn't stressful. Most of the time we say, oh, I've had a bad day. But the reality is you had a couple of bad moments in the middle of a day. The entire day probably wasn't bad. So call to your attention a moment that was actually really good and start to focus on that. Great. And then come back to the center. And I want you to hug your knees into your chest this time. Rock yourself side to side. The rocking motion is a naturally soothing motion for the body. We love it. We've loved it since we were babies. 
We've loved it since before we were born, to be honest. So it can be really sweet to just rock yourself side to side. And then bonus, you're getting a little back massage as you do it. Great. From there, just release your feet down. I want you to knock your knees in together today. So you have a lot of stability. You can really feel your feet underneath you. And then just place your hands on your own body, making contact with yourself. Acknowledge that this is a moment that you're taking for yourself. No one can take it away from you. You have this moment for you to breathe. If you felt like everything has been coming at you from all different angles, I get it. I understand that we've all been there. But what our yoga practice and what our breathing practices offer us is another way, a way to just start to pay attention, to support ourselves, cultivate some resiliency. So no matter where you are, what you did or didn't do, even if you felt like you made a colossal mistake today, that's past. You're in a present moment right now. You can learn and move forward. You can let go and move forward. You can relax and move forward. All of these are possible for you. start to move yourself out of your Shavasana. Take your time, roll to your side. And then press yourself up. <sighs> that feels better. It doesn't matter if you um, love what you do, maybe you're home with kiddos, or maybe you even own your own business. We all have days, regardless of what's coming at us on a day-to-day -day basis or our general feeling about it. We all have days that take a toll on us. But if we start to cultivate this kind of practice where we take care of ourselves, where we pause and we say, oh, what feels good or what could feel good in this moment in my body, that is such an awesome practice not to tune out your day, but actually to tune in to yourself. And when we do that, we come back feeling lighter, brighter, more energized, more at peace. And that's what I really hope for you. I want you to feel at peace. Thank you so much for joining me in this video. It means a lot that you showed up for yourself. I'll see you in the next video. Namaste. Hey, it's Julia, and welcome to my 30-day Yoga for Weight Loss program. I've designed this program to help you live more optimally. In addition to 30 days of yoga, you will find bonus tips and homework assignments at the end of each video to help you stay on track. You did it! In fact, we've created a really balanced program. This means you are going to be addressing all aspects of your well being, from your physicality all the way to how are you feeling mentally and emotionally throughout the entire 30 days. We're starting right here from the ground on up to build a practice that you can sustain day in, day out for your whole life. But let's just start with 30 days. I can't wait to get started with you and I'll see you on your mat. Available now on Amazon and on wellnessplus.tv.